There are three types of minor scales. Natural minor, harmonic minor, and melodic minor. If you're like most piano students, you might be asking, why do we need three kinds of minor scales? And also, how am I going to remember the difference between them? Uh, and the answer to both questions is tied up in the names of these scales. The natural minor scale is kind of the default. It shares all the same notes with its relative major. The harmonic minor scale is really good for creating harmony, for creating chords in a way that the natural minor scale is not. And the melodic minor scale is great for playing melodies. So let's give clear definitions for the differences between these three scales using the key of C as an example. And along the way, we'll relate everything to the names in a way that will help you to remember these. It's good to be able to find these scales on your own, but if you'd like a reference guide, I have a three-page guide to all 12 keys for all three types of minor scale, and that's available for free at my website, and you can follow the link. We'll start off with C natural minor. And as with most things in music theory, we're actually going to define it using the major scale. We're gonna look at the parallel major, that is C major, the major scale that starts and ends on the same note. So C major needs its third, sixth, and seventh scale degrees lowered by a half step in order to become C natural minor. The nice thing as we move on to these other types of minor is that they keep that lowered third. Every kind of minor scale has a lowered third. It's kind of the characteristic sound of the minor scale. So actually we're only worried about scale degrees six and seven. Those are the only things that change as we shift between one minor scale and another. The default with this natural minor scale is that we have them both lowered flat six and flat seven compared to the parallel major, okay? Um, and because we like to define everything by the major scale in music theory, I'm just gonna call these flat six and flat seven, even though if we're thinking in natural minor, this is the default. All right, so when we go to harmonic minor, instead of flat three, flat six, and flat seven, we're only using flat three and flat six. The seven remains in the same place it would be for the major scale. The reason we do this is for the sake of harmony. That's why this is called the harmonic minor scale. Listen to this very, very common cadence, five, one. If I play that with the natural minor scale, it has this kind of neutral sound. But if I play it with the harmonic minor scale, it has a very strong forward leaning sound. And composers love that sound. We rely on it heavily for a sense of resolution in a major key. And it's nice to be able to use it in minor keys as well. A really strong five to one resolution. The really important note in that resolution, kind of the money note, is that seventh scale degree resolving upward to one. So that might help you to remember this. That's how I remember, what is harmonic minor? Well, I need that leading tone. I need that seventh scale degree to lead really strongly up a half step into one. Okay, so the seventh scale degree is gonna be the same as the major scale. It's just a half step below the root, but I still need the other lower notes in the minor scale. I need the flat six and the flat three. That's harmonic minor. And harmonic minor has this interesting interval between flat six and natural seven. We call that interval an augmented second. It's not terribly important that you know that, but um, the sound of that interval is really interesting. It's kind of wider. It gives it, you know, some people feel like it's kind of an exotic sound. So that's part of what you can also associate with the harmonic minor scale. A melodic minor scale sounds like this.
If you like things to be simple, this might be a little maddening because we actually have a scale that's different going up versus going down. Let's look at what changes. So on the way up, we actually only use that lowered third. The six and seven now are identical to the parallel major scale. Uh, so the only thing that's changed from C major is that we lower that third and have an E flat. And the reason we like this for melodies, right, melodic minor, is that it leads so strongly up to the one. It avoids that augmented second that we get in harmonic minor, and we get this really strong melodic upward movement, five, six, seven, one. That makes this quite common um, in minor key songs within a melody. You know, it may be that most of the other harmonic and melodic material in the piece um, just uses the notes from natural minor or maybe har uh, harmonic minor. But often when a melody is leading from the five up to the one, it will follow this pattern that's like stolen from the major scale. Five, six, seven, one. Just so that we have that really strong sense of leading upward. Now, meanwhile, when we're leading downward, it's nice to pull again from that darker natural minor sound. And here, it actually leads really strongly down to the five if we use that lowered seventh and lowered sixth. We end on that half step resolution and it has a really nice downward pull. So when we're on our way up, we raise everything, raised sixth, raised seventh, compared to the natural minor. And when our, we're on our way down, we lower everything lowered seventh, lowered sixth. And that's melodic minor. So to review, we're gonna compare all three types of minor to C major. C natural minor has a lowered third, sixth, and seventh. C harmonic minor has just a lowered third and sixth. And C melodic minor starts with just a lowered third and then lowers the sixth and seventh on the way down. If you like the way that I teach theory and you'd like more in-depth guidance on how to practice these scales in every key and get really comfortable with them as an improviser, become a member at pianofluency.com. That's the best way that I can help you. I have a very robust uh, learning path there in an online course for students who find me online, along with an online community with other piano students and a live class that I teach once a week for all members. Uh, so I love working with people uh, in the Piano Fluency program, and you can join by heading to my website, pianofluency.com, and becoming a member. I'd love to see you there. Either way, if you want more free piano education videos like this, you should subscribe to this channel. Uh, and I want to thank you for joining me. My name is Ted with Piano Fluency.